Hi there. In this educational video, we are going to talk about the respiratory system and some of the processes that allow it to supply the body with oxygen while removing carbon dioxide from the body. On its own, the respiratory system works to perform two major processes. First, ventilation. Ventilation is breathing, or inhalation and exhalation. It can be defined as the mechanical flow of air into and out of the lungs. Second, the respiratory system performs pulmonary gas exchange. This is the simple diffusion of oxygen into the blood from the alveolar air and carbon dioxide diffusing from the blood into the alveolar air. Working closely with the respiratory system is the cardiovascular system, which allows for the transport of gases throughout the blood, systemic gas exchange at the site of bodily tissues, which is the simple diffusion of oxygen from the blood into the tissues, and carbon dioxide diffusing from the tissues into the blood. Lastly, cellular respiration occurs within the mitochondria of the cells, thus fueling all the cells of your body. The respiratory system and cardiovascular system being so closely connected is a prime example of how body systems interact. Without the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system could not do its job, and therefore all the cells would become starved of oxygen, acidified from a buildup of carbon dioxide, and would cease functioning. The focus of this educational video is step one of everything. That is, ventilation, how air flows into and out of your lungs. In order to describe the processes of pulmonary ventilation, we need to define some basic pressures that will be necessary to understand how pulmonary ventilation works. First, there is atmospheric pressure, which is the air pressure in the environment. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is approximately 760 millimeters of mercury. At the elevation of San Antonio, Texas, it is approximately 742 millimeters of mercury. At Colorado Springs, Colorado, approximately 610 millimeters of mercury. At La Paz, Bolivia, the highest city in the world, it is 496 millimeters of mercury. At the top of Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, the atmospheric pressure is just 250 millimeters of mercury. So no wonder why you can't breathe without an oxygen mask. The bottom line is that atmospheric pressure decreases as you increase in elevation or altitude. The next two pressures that are important to define are physiological pressures. That is, the pressures inside your body. Intrapulmonary pressure is the air pressure in the lungs. This pressure is particularly important because it will change during inhalation and exhalation, thus allowing air to flow into and out of the lungs respectively. Lastly, there's intrapleural pressure, which is the air pressure in the pleural cavity that surrounds the lungs. Intrapleural pressure is always negative, that is, less than atmospheric pressure. Therefore, the lungs end up sticking to the thoracic cavity via suction, thus preventing the lungs from ever collapsing. Altogether, pulmonary ventilation relies perhaps most heavily upon differences between atmospheric pressure and intrapulmonary pressure. Any changes to the volume of the thoracic cavity will lead to changes in intrapulmonary pressure, which will then lead to changes in airflow. So let's break this down further by talking about what occurs during inhalation, what occurs during exhalation, and at the end of this video we'll summarize everything together. So let's start with inhalation, also known as inspiration or airflow into the lungs. During inhalation, the thoracic cavity size and thoracic cavity volume increases as the diaphragm contracts downwards and the external intercostal muscles contract. 
When the thoracic cavity size increases as a result of these muscle contractions, the lungs will inflate because, remember, the negative intrapleural pressure will make the lungs stick to the thoracic cavity wall. So when the thoracic cavity increases in volume, so do the lungs. When lung volume increases, the intrapulmonary pressure decreases. This is an extremely important point, and this is because the pressure of a gas, or gases, is inversely proportional to the volume of a closed container, aka the lungs. This is defined as Boyle's Law. Now when intrapulmonary pressure decreases below atmospheric pressure, air flows into the lungs. This is also defined as being a negative pressure within the lungs. So let's have an example. You're walking along a beach, therefore sea level. Atmospheric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. And in order for inhalation to occur, intrapulmonary pressure needs to be lower than that 760 millimeters of mercury. Otherwise, no airflow will occur into the lungs and you'll therefore suffocate on the beach. However, when the thoracic cavity size increases thanks to those muscle contractions, the lung volume will increase and intrapulmonary pressure will decrease below 760 millimeters of mercury to, let's say, about 752 millimeters of mercury, and the result is airflow into the lungs because air flows down a pressure gradient from high to low pressure. This ultimately will allow for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange between alveolar air that was just brought in and the blood. Now that we've discussed airflow into the lungs, that is inhalation, let's talk about exhalation, also known as expiration, and airflow out of the lungs. During exhalation, the thoracic cavity size and thoracic cavity volume decreases as the diaphragm relaxes upwards and the external intercostal muscles relax. Forced exhalation will involve contraction of the internal intercostal muscles as well, but we're not going to focus on that here. When the thoracic cavity size decreases, the lungs will deflate. Remember again that the negative intrapleural pressure will make the lungs stick to the thoracic cavity wall. Therefore, when the thoracic cavity decreases in volume, so do the lungs. And when lung volume decreases, the intrapulmonary pressure will increase, as defined by Boyle's Law. When intrapulmonary pressure increases above atmospheric pressure, air will flow out of the lungs. This is also defined as being a positive pressure within the lungs. So let's have another example. You're laying on the couch along the beach, therefore sea level. Atmospheric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. And in order for exhalation to occur, intrapulmonary pressure needs to be lower than that 760 millimeters of mercury. Otherwise, no airflow out of the lungs will occur and you will suffocate on the couch. However, when thoracic cavity size decreases, thanks to the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles relaxing, lung volume decreases and intrapulmonary pressure increases above 760 millimeters of mercury, let's say to about 768 millimeters of mercury. The result is air flow out of the lungs because air flows down a pressure gradient from high to low. This is going to be important because it will allow for carbon dioxide rich air to be expelled into the environment. If you were to forcefully contract your internal intercostal muscles, let's say during a heavy sigh, or if someone pushes on your chest while you lay on the couch, then the intrapulmonary pressure will rise even higher than 760 millimeters of mercury, and even more air will be expired from your lungs.
Alrighty, that's pulmonary ventilation for you. You have atmospheric pressure, intrapulmonary pressure, and intrapleural pressure. Atmospheric pressure is in the environment and varies based on altitude. Intrapleural pressure should always be negative, which is less than atmospheric pressure. And intrapulmonary pressure decreases as thoracic cavity volume increases. And when intrapulmonary pressure drops below atmospheric pressure, air will flow into the lungs. This is inhalation. On the other hand, intrapulmonary pressure will increase as thoracic cavity volume decreases. And when intrapulmonary pressure increases above atmospheric pressure, air will flow out of the lungs. This is exhalation. So you see, breathing is really nothing more than alterations in thoracic cavity size and lung volume size that allows air to be sucked in and pushed out of the lungs, all following pressure gradients going from high pressure to low pressure. Pretty cool, right?